So, today I'm going to talk about the LRASM, which is pretty important, and I'm going to talk about why it is important. So, the LRASM is short for Long Range Anti-Ship Missile, and it's a new munition for precise strike on heavy naval targets in more air-restricted battle space, and that seems to be the trend that a lot of firms are leaning towards. They think that's the future more restricted airspace within the battlefield or the battle space in general. Now, the LRASM is really next generation. As I said, it's a precision-guided missile, a cruise missile, designed to detect and destroy enemy ships or potentially other targets at long range. It's developed by DARPA uh, of the US as well as Lockheed Martin. Now, the aim really is to create the next generation, uh, a highly, highly accurate a more computer-centric, long-range missile system capable of effectively targeting enemy ships in a manner that does the most damage. Now, the LRASM is based on the AGM-158, which most of you probably know as the JASM, the J-A-S-S-M, uh, the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, specifically the Extended Range Variant otherwise known as the JASM ER. Now, these have been in service with the US military since around 2009, designed to detect uh, and track enemy ships and finally strike them. Using standoff capability, of course, it's in the name. Now, the LRASM has been upgraded with a number of advanced technologies in order to improve, uh, sort of improve its effectiveness uh, and performance. It's brilliant, actually. It's now got a multi-mode passive RF seeker, a new and improved weapon uh, data link, and obviously a greatly improved altimeter and upgraded power system, and both of those are in order to optimize use within the naval battle space, uh, both for naval use strike and naval radar evasion. Now this allows it to operate in a smoother way during the mid and terminal guidance phases. Think about it like this, uh, not only is it better able to evade detection by naval systems, but it can react faster to pop-up threats, it can manoeuvre better in regard to moving around pop-up threats as it navigates waypoints, and obviously it can utilise more stealthy uh, strategy when sea-skimming, uh, and those sea-skimming capabilities mean that in the terminal phase it has a higher chance of strike, because it has a lower chance of detection. Now, on that note, one of the key features of the LRASM is its ability to operate within contested environments. The missile is equipped with uh, really a variety of sensors, um, but this isn't all really. It's also utilizing pretty much the most modern algorithms, which allow it to detect and avoid enemy air defenses and detection systems, as well as other threats, generally more based on electronic warfare, stuff like jamming stations, decoys. Now, this enables the LRASM to penetrate enemy air defences and breach a target with a huge degree of accuracy. Even in the face of significant opposition, it can coordinate with other units, constantly really crunching data from itself, other units, and its uh, mothership, as it were, the thing it's launched from, and platforms and assets in the area in order to avoid obstacles. That could be enemy radar, that could be enemy ships, that could be um, electronic warfare platforms. That could be sensor pods, that could even be commercial ships, in any case it doesn't matter. It can utilise a lot of information in order to remain stealthy and traverse the entirety of its distance. Another huge advantage of the LRASM is of course its long range. It's based on the JASM, uh, the Joint uh, Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, and so it is of course standoff. It's long range, it has a range of over 200 nautical miles, and the missile is capable of engaging an enemy ship from a safe distance. The entire idea of standoff capability being that if I poke you with a six-foot stick and you only have a three-foot stick, then I am safe. And that's the same sort of idea with this, that uh, the unit, the vessel, or the aircraft uh, that launches the LRASM is safe because it maintains distance. And that reduces the risk of counterattack and reduces the risk to any human uh, or non-human assets within the area. Now, this makes the LRASM an ideal weapon uh, for use, really, in naval contexts for a variety of reasons. 
particularly because of its excellent operation in the open ocean. But more than this, beyond being uh, an open ocean strike package, uh, which of course it is because it's designed to be long range and attack uh, naval assets, sort of larger naval assets, it can also operate quite well within a literal environment. Uh, shallower waters, green water operations, and potentially even use in uh, cruise missile capability within urban environments and penetrating deep into enemy territory if adapted. Now, in addition to its offensive capabilities, which of course it has, it's an incredibly powerful package. The LRASM is designed to be highly reliable and effective, and in order to do this, it employs a really sophisticated guidance system. Uh, and this guidance system allows it to adjust its course in flight to ensure that it breaches the target utilizing uh, this sort of flexible waypoint system. Now, the idea of a waypoint system is that perhaps sensors aren't fully engaged in activating course. There is computer-generated course which utilizes certain GPS coordinates, which the munition then moves to with aid of uh, INS. Uh, and effectively, that means that it can travel in the most efficient uh, and stealthiest manner humanly possible. But something important about the LRASM is its ability to move uh, waypoints properly in order to find its way around targets and improve mid-stage guidance. Now, it, this isn't just targets uh, or obstacles that exist, but rather around pop-up threats. And it utilizes a four-stage uh, improved system from the JASSM, which is first a reduction of area of uncertainty, second uh, is target classification, third is a confirmation of this target classification, and the fourth is an optimization of terminal routing once it has adjusted waypoints within the mid phase, uh, still able to adjust for pop-up threats until the last second of the terminal phase. Now, the navigation in the terminal phase is also pretty impressive, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And of course, the idea of the terminal phase of the entire uh, cruise is in order to deliver the powerful warhead, a warhead that's capable of causing significant damage to enemy ships, and it's the same warhead as the JASSM. But in regard to the sensors that it utilizes, particularly in the terminal phase, uh, I find this quite impressive. It can calculate the best sort of mean point of impact on a ship in order to best maximize strike lethality. Meaning in the mid phase, it's avoiding threats. And in the terminal phase, not only is it avoiding threats, utilizing sea skimming uh, capability, but also uh, minimizing threats in its strike ability and maximizing damage to really expensive naval assets, which is a positive thing. Now the LRASM is currently in the testing and development stage with, I think it only having its first successful flight in 2013. But it's expected to be deployed somewhere in the near future, and likely will be integrated into a load of other platforms. Uh, but I think currently there are plans for the F-18, the B-1, and the F-35. But it's designed to be able to launch from warships, uh, other naval platforms, potentially even land-based platforms. And uh, I'll talk about this at a later date, but there is, of course, the potential for launch from cargo planes, considering JASSM, ER's Rapid Dragon adaptation, the idea that it can uh, be palletized missile launch, uh, and considering they're similar, the LRASM may at some point be pallet launchable, and that would be pretty amazing, but until then the LRASM is transported on smaller aircraft. And actually, this is a pretty interesting fact, it utilizes, and you can tell it's new when it utilizes flip technology, that is that if you watch any video of a new cruise missile developed in the past eight years or so, you'll see it deploy from an upside down position. Now, unlike something like Storm Shadow, which deploys in flight orientation, the reason for this is protection. Uh, we have the technology to make it more maneuverable, able to do a flip, uh, and units are expensive enough as it is. So you have to protect the sensors, which are the most vulnerable part when struck from the bottom. So there's something you didn't know. That's why they are deployed upside down. But something that the US is actually quite interested in considering is the sort of rising potential threat of China, of course. And this is where the LRSM really comes into play. This is both for their own Navy and potentially Taiwanese forces. The missile could, again, potentially be used in 
conjunction with JASSMs, Joint Air to Surface Standoff Missiles, in order to strike high value naval targets, eliminating China's ability to utilize naval assets and advanced uh, naval launched munitions. So effectively, it can penetrate uh, potentially enemy airspace if this were ever to be a problem uh, and strike potentially even inland static targets of importance because of its range, its power, and its evasive ability. So overall, really, the LRASM missile represents pretty significant advancement uh, in heavy cruise missile technology, and it's something which is tangible, which we can see tested, which we can see is soon to be implemented. Its long range, advanced sensors, ability to operate in contested environments, makes it a pretty formidable weapon. And it's capable of effectively targeting enemy ships while minimizing risk of collateral damage, and that's a pretty important thing, along with use in conjunction with other munitions. So, tactically speaking, strategically speaking, internationally speaking, it's important because of uh, potential, uh, I guess you'd say, more Southern Asian relations, international relations, as well as uh, tactical operations within the Pacific if a war ever were to break out there. So... I think it's rather interesting, and Lockheed has certainly done a pretty excellent job in implementing this and adapting the JASSM technology in order to provide something that has increased capabilities for naval applications, so I guess I'll leave it there.